you got your Andrew Tate and your Kevin Samuels and your your Derek Johnson, all these guys now, uh, such a big thing, that whole mm. red pill thinking. And mm. then, but this was something, we were doing this in 2006 on, on, on satellite radio, when we were just recognize it, that something was going on, something was different. And there was a control. shift in the culture, yeah. you mean? Right. Yeah, shift in, shift in the whole paradigm. Um, Primarily because, and in, in my opinion, a lot of it was because of the, the the birth of feminism, and what we were dealing with was was the the pendulum swinging all the right, all the way right, and us resisting against a change that, in in my opinion, needed to happen. What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have mixed martial artist, entrepreneur Anthony Albert is here. We discuss the legacy of Black Phillip show, Patrice O'Neill, how much uh, focus should be put on relationships along with the other things that we're trying to have a goal, uh, the dynamics of sex parties, open relationships, and not wasting time in life. It's, this is a dope one, man. Good dude. Good show. Yeah. A lot of information. Um, and yeah, he started out as a, a supporter of the show, all the way from the the Black Phillip show, the Beige Phillip show, to this, and also supports us on Patreon as well. Uh, and if you want to support us on Patreon, please go over to Patreon.com/slash/Manschool202, and you can subscribe and get bonus content. That's where we do the listener mail and all the technical stuff as well, and that helps out the show, keeps us going, and also we do consultations. Advice from Harry at gmail.com. That's how you reach me if you'd like to get a consultation. And uh, for Dante, you can go to uh, DanteNero.com and click on consult. It's a, It was a really good show, man. This was a really, really good show. All right. Let's get into it, baby. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Dante, whenever you're ready, you can start talking and Yo, yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? Uh, GYBB, get your balls back, WWDD. What would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, all the way from down under, way the fuck over in Australia. We was trying to get this dude on for a minute and had a problem with the internet because of... Because the toilet, when you flush the toilet, it goes the other way. That's what we found that's, out. That's, that's what it. the problem was. We, um, we get all our knowledge from that one episode of The Simpsons. That's all we know about Australia. But that's, uh, a, that's a pretty accurate representation. Of our <laughs> system. I'll give you that one. It's pretty good. It's uh, pretty good. Uh, this this gentleman is uh, a, a listener show, a fan of the show. But I mean living an extraordinary life a mixed martial artist an instructor uh an entrepreneur uh give it up everybody for uh, anthony albert everybody anthony albert what up hey. joining the show yo it's good, the- to, good to see you guys and be on from all the way from australia i've been listening to you guys for a long long time yeah. um and you guys have helped me out through a lot of different things so it's a little bit of an interesting relationship we got going on here considering i've like never met either of you um, but you've helped me out a lot. It's hap- it just happens a lot. We 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 get that in the DMs often. Mm. You know, guys who are listening, you don't, you know, your your intention is to just to be righteous and stuff like that. And and you know, it affects people in a positive way, which is which is actually pretty awesome. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, like this this first happened because when uh, Harry started doing his consultations i uh, just wanted to give him a bit of a props and i was like here you go yeah it was the best consultation he's like i don't need any <laughs> advice i just want to say thank you and how great you guys are i was like oh this is the best 15 minutes i've ever uh this is, a quick, yeah. this is pretty good i i and uh i was like all right i guess is this what they're all going to be like they have not been like that <laughs> anthony okay. uh they have not been that easy since then, uh-huh. but yours was one of the first ones. So now, did I, he did he thank you for the full fifteen minutes? Did he get his money worth? Did he? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, you know, we when, talked about when, when some a little stuff. bit over. Yeah, he believe talked, it or not, I was willing to go over the fifteen minutes uh, he, to he hear how to, great he I was. Talked about your skin. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. Great hair. <laughs> I think we did three and a half hours. Uh, I don't know. Fair enough. If, uh, anywhere between uh, twenty minutes and uh, three and a half hours. Uh, but there was a nice thing to hear. But I then then I wanted to know about, you know, it's weird because you do the same thing, Dante. We kind of want to know about him, like them. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you're like, yeah. yeah, I know about me. Yeah. I want to hear a good story. He's like, well, I go, well, what did we do for you? How's your life? And and Anthony started to explain all that. So I wanted him to 
come here and explain a little bit on the show as well, like how you found the show and yeah. and and the the way it changed your life and what what parts of what we were teaching uh, affected you. I guess it's a couple things at once. But so let's start with how you came upon the show and then uh, what what connected you to us so much. Mm, well, um, it was originally I was. Uh, 19 at the time i just went through um a breakup with the first girlfriend and um you know your first just, girlfriend ever first girl well not you know you get your little high school thing that lasts for like two weeks right right but first <laughs> but, like, legit first, girl first legit girlfriend yeah so i was i was curious like what the hell really happened there um and i, I know you know I, I needed to find out more about the world not just like what i learned from my parents and like the people around me so you know, I consult the internet, and what do I find? I find the uh, the Black Phillip show. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll be driving along, um, just listening to the Black Phillip show, just like hours and hours. Uh, probably listen to it about three times over, wow. just to to really dig into things. You know, because you hear it once, you, you know, sure you maybe get a little bit, but it's not until things are actually drilled in that you really learn the lessons there. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, of course, it's very entertaining. Um, and, and like you said, there's a lot of anger to it as well. So that, that had its own effects. But um, I yeah, like the I really idea that you're up. listening to it the third time. You just have notes that you're taking like a college <laughs> student in a spiral notebook. Yeah. I've, I've seen it. I know guys that do that. They, I mean, I've run into guys who, who are such a big fan of it because it was so, um, at the time, it was so ahead of its time it i mean i, I mean there's, you you got your andrew tates and your kevin samuels and your your Derek johnson all these guys now who who have been doing it who, who are doing it now which is like it's so uh such a big thing that whole hmm. red pill thinking and hmm. then but this was something we were doing this in 2006 on 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 satellite radio um, the problem was, you know, the problem and the problem that I talk about a lot of times is at the time it was it was 2006. Right. And uh, we're literally talking about a time that um, when we would just recognize it, that something was going on, something was different. And and and, and guys didn't really that have there any was a control. shift in the culture. Yeah. You mean right. yeah, shift, in, shift in the whole paradigm. Um Primarily because, and in, in my opinion, a lot of it was because of the, the the birth of feminism. And what's interesting is, that, you know, and I, Harry and I debate about this back and forth all the time, is that, you know, there is an injustice. And because of there's an injustice, there's this knee-jerk reaction. And the pendulum swings all the way right. And then it swings all the way left. And then it starts to find the center. And so... What we were dealing with was was the the pendulum swinging all the right all the way right and us resisting against a change that in in my opinion needed to happen. I mean, you know, guys were doing pretty shitty things to women, you know, throughout history mm. and and and. But the problem is when it's the the oppression is is never scalpel like. It's never sniper like. And so the response to it also is never sniper like. So there's people who who absolutely is deserved, you know, what they got from the Me Too movement. But there's also a lot of guys who got swept up in it, who got who really weren't shitty dudes or creepy dudes who got caught up in it as well, you know, and and, uh, you know, and had to, you know, kind of pay the price for that. So. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, listening to the show definitely gave me a lot of energy to kind of um, do what I did. Um, yeah. So basically, um, throughout my twenties, I just uh, focused heavily on my my uh, mixed martial arts career. Right. Um, so just training and fighting, and um, what the Beige Philip show did is it brought mm. in the um, uh, you know, the authenticity factor, the the fact yeah, yeah. that you know, become yourself, sort of thing. As opposed to just like breaking down what the 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 relationship itself or the woman side of things. Right, right. So, um, um, this direction that you've taken has helped me out massively, and um, I found myself just consistently referring back to the you know the acronyms. You got the RFF, Reasonable Firm Affair. That one yeah. was a major one, especially yeah. going through the all sorts of issues, uh, dating and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, 
that one gives gives me a lot of confidence in general. Um, and then you you got the ace authors and authenticity, uh, credibility, yeah. and uh, empathy. Would you as well. explain? Uh, would you explain what R I R F F meant to you and how it how, what the context? Are? Because I I yep. talk about that, but I don't talk about that as nearly as much as. So I, I'd be interested to see what your perception of it was and yep. and what was your personal application. I'll tell you what it did for me. Um, it, it, it showed me just how manipulative some people can be. Yeah. So even outside of relationships, um, but in relationships as well, it's it's um, it's it can get like quite scary. Um, uh, just the way people re to react uh, to the things that I'm trying to achieve because I'm not I'm not looking to do like the a nine to five regular thing. You know, I'm right. trying to go far beyond that, and um, I have to consistently question myself because I am very like I'm super empathetic, um, which mm -hmm. is why I. Um, that was kind of like my strong point in the martial arts part. I could actually tell how much damage I was doing to people by kind of reading my own body. And yeah. if I knew if I was like going into the pain cave, he's definitely. So you, you're not one of those cave. dudes that puts the arm bar on longer than you should. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Uh, only to the people that deserve it. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Real well, I'm just off <laughs> off uh off red uh you know Rumble you know Rumble Johnson just died. I know that that was a shock. So it's it's funny like I had an agent who uh who stopped doing like he was a a, a legit agent was getting me a lot of my acting jobs at the time and he was heavily into mixed martial arts and heavily into Sistema at the time mm -hmm. as well. But he he started doing one of the early he had an early uh kind of mma podcast and he stopped managing me so that he could do pursue this, the mma podcast this mma fighting wow. and so he he uh he he interviewed rumble and all this and, and what's funny is um he just he called me today because he's really upset because rumble was a friend of his and uh he said that and i there was a period of time when he you know, when he stopped being my manager, what happened was he was doing uh jujitsu class and the guy uh, and and they kept, you know, they, you know, they, you, when you you do a choke, like a rear naked choke, a, car, a carotid artery choke, mm. you tend to you, you people want to feel that it works. Mm. And he ended up we just found out today. It's funny because he, that the reason why he stopped managing me was because he had done a jujitsu exhibition with some other guy and they, and he was the Uki who, who was like the carotid artery was on that choke went on him 32 times in a row mm -hmm. and he damaged his esophagus Damn. and had the, which is why he stopped managing me. And it's funny because I just found out this, that it, it actually, it, you know, because you're, you're literally stopping the blood that's going to the brain. Yeah. So you imagine somebody does an exhibition for two or three hours and then you you're there helping them put on this. And then every every amateur is choking you out, choking you out, even if they're just, you know, letting you feel it. But he, he, amateurs were choking him out. Yes. Yes. Damn. That's oh, as, a, as a Uki. You know, because we we yeah. all. Yeah, OK, try feel it. OK. All right. I feel yeah, it. Yeah. You, and literally damaged his esophagus. So it's it's weird. And, and it's funny because we. Just talked about it today because Rumble passed away and was like, well, what, you know, you often think about, you know, blood clots and stuff and your guy yeah. who's that young. So yeah. I just don't mean to go off. But I mean, that was, that was just an interesting thing that this dude, I, 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 couldn't, I was like, why did my I was like, why did my agent fire me? And it was that he, he didn't want to crazy yeah. reason. But, you know, we In also show business. <laughs> a tough guy. So when something's wrong, I said, well, why did That's, you tell me that? He goes, well, yeah. you know, you just. You you know how are you? I'm fine. You know you. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not on a Facetime, your eye socket is broken and the eyes hanging out your head. You know, I'm fine. <laughs> there's um there's a kind of a hidden point in, in what you just said there though because um the the effort that you put in, especially with martial arts, mm -hmm. and this is something that you know um all right. So when I'm training, I'm always trying to train the people around me because I know if they get better, I get better. Right. Uh, and one massive thing is that you have to teach people is that like the amount of effort that, that you put in does not equal the amount of results that you actually get. Absolutely. Well, if I'm kicking hard and I, my body is receiving it as, oh, I'm kicking hard, 99.99% of the time is actually a worse kick compared to if you're completely relaxed. 
Right. Um, so yes. you, you just got to be able to flow with things and, um, and yeah, just just really understand what you actually want, which is the results, not so much the effort you put in. And there is that learning curve that you go through, um, but if it's done properly, it like it really doesn't feel like work because there's a whole bunch of other aspects involved with it, like the community and yeah, uh, you know the fact that you're you're building a friendship with someone else that kind of like overrides the effort side of things. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what what you guys uh, did for me. Um, mm. Like I've I've gone. So basically from uh, 19 up until 28, I didn't have a girlfriend. Um, mm. I didn't have a partner. Uh, I was single at the time. And I did play around a little bit. I uh, had a couple of years um, celibacy as well. So I went three years completely off because I found I would actually interfere with my training. You know, you go out, you eat whatever the hell, you have a bad mm. night of sleep. Basically, that's half a week worth of training gone. Right. Um yeah, so it's it's only I guess recently since the the COVID, uh, the lockdowns in Australia lifted that um I really went back out there strong again with the with the dating um uh, to actually try and find someone that could help me out along and the way. How old are you now? I'm 33 this year. Okay. Yeah, so the lockdown lifted when I was 31. Um, okay. Melbourne, Australia, like went through the worst <laughs> in the right, world. Right, right, yeah. Most you livable city to the, yeah. the the most lockdown city. So, um, but and, real, real quick, you're talking yeah. about from the time that you're 19 that you go through this breakup, you start listening to Black Phillip, yeah. and then we're talking all the way up to the. But that's a what was going on between 19 and 29, like that. Just really hope focusing down on like what I'm doing and and um, basically trying to improve myself and and, and my career wise as well. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, like you're uh, focusing done, on the M the 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 fighting career correct yeah, yeah i was a yeah. uh, full-time sponsored um professional fighter um it took a while to build up to that point and you know this you work a lot of random jobs as well to to support yourself um at the same time i was doing stuff like i was organizing esports um so i was i was in that that whole wave when um, what actually happened was the dlc to download more content came out so then there was an actual way for the the developers and stuff to see hey there's actually money involved in esports and then they started supporting it so right. uh, the organization i was part of were, were called couch warriors literally just a bunch of guys on couch playing video games right right and then that evolved into like a massive thing where we see like you know two thousand people through the door we were around with all the um all the big uh you know like uh packs and um like eb sports and all that sort of stuff so you actually started making money from gaming as well I was, I was just, uh, I'm like you guys, I was a step before all that. So, um, okay. yeah. So, you know, I was, when I was 18, I was actually sponsored to go overseas to like play video games competitively. Yeah. Um, so, so that's two, you're following two dreams at the same time, which are very oh. like intense <laughs> things. Uh, yes. And it involves a lot of training. It's just like, yeah, it, it becomes a completely different thing. So that's um, how do you, do, so you, so the, that point you've got a lot of time commitment so it's almost do you shut out the the part of the relationship aspect of it is that something that happened with you where you just shut it all kind of down because you're yeah found it for, for what reason because you found it confusing difficult or just to focus or both no because i understood um if uh, where i was then if i was to find someone that i want it's not going to be chances are it's not going to happen um i need to put myself in a better position i need to um improve myself as a person, um, study as well. Like I look at the relationship aspect of my life, you know, professional, spiritual health, all that sort of stuff. And, and really develop in all those aspects. And, um, you know, if, if someone has different goals than you, they, you know, they're going to be wanting to achieve their own goals. And if they got the goals of yourself, you got the goals of them and you got the goals of the relationship, you know, it's, it's the stuff in between. It's, it's going to like really, What's um, What's interesting yeah. is that you kind of approach the relationship the same way you approach fighting. You're like, I'm not ready. I need to do more training. <laughs> like, I'm not ready to be in a relationship. I don't know. And maybe that comes from being in a fighting background. I, I don't know, Dante, if you feel like well, that. Well, I, I think what happens is a lot of times we think that we focus. What I was going to ask you is mm. in, ret in retrospect, right? Uh, if you think back of how exclusive you were about each thing mm. um so
So, so I, 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 a lot, a lot of times, what I find is that people focus, and I mean, if it gets them to what their, what their goal is, is great. But the other hand is, in retrospect, you, you, I think we have to understand that this is not about. It, it, it's kind of you said this in another way. I, I forget how you said it, but it's not about the the finish line. It's about the journey. It's not the what am I trying to get out of this. It's that mm. I that I am living life in real time and I'm mm. growing and expanding and 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 yeah. and becoming and and also the the journey of that the experience that gets me through this. So you know I've I've seen this a lot of times. It's, I mean, and I I get it because. If you're in a situation where you don't think you're worthy of relationship or girlfriends or these social situations, you're 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 not going to succeed anyway. Well, all you're going to be is discouraged. And so for mm. you, the process is I'm going to withdraw. I'm going to do the work that needs to be done to put myself in a position where I can demand what I want on the open market. Mm. Um, but I, I, I'm also thinking in retrospect. Life is happening. Do you know what yes. I mean? In yes. real time. And I, I I know for me, there's times that I deprive myself of certain things when I when I could have. Now, I could you can't be in a relationship with somebody or you can't be involved with a woman who is going to control your time when you're going to when you you know, if you're trying to achieve a goal. But mm. every girl doesn't want to control your time. And if you have real control over your your thoughts and your mind, then it doesn't matter if she wants to control your time anyway. You, you I, we're not doing yeah. that. You can yeah. just say no. You know. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the, the stuff I've, I've um, I guess, really, uh, I don't know, weaved in since um, since going hard at it again. Um, right, right. You know, when when the lockdown lifted, uh, a lot of it comes to choice. Like, I'm yeah. I'm fine with the um, the fact that I made that choice, but exactly what you yeah, said well, as I mean, well. Like, li life something. is happening around me, so I'm I, I'm also out there to experience. But it's life also as well. this is not this is not something we. I mean, it's in the past. It's, this this is was the choice, and we and you mm. absolutely see, accept. I'm just saying, you know, a lot of times when I look at things in hindsight and I go back, like, wow, what what can I learn from this? And and part of that is what you know when I tell dudes, I like, go, oh, look, you you know. You, you you're like if you're laying the five bricks once mm. you once you do it two or three weeks it takes 15 minutes you, i mean you yeah. go you it doesn't even take time it happens a lot of times it happens in the course of your day it'll yeah. happen you know yeah um and so the 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 the, 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 the point is living life and enjoying it as and the journey and the growth and those wins and and i i get how how you know to, to 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 focus on that, you know, one of the, you know, I, it's a it's a it's an interesting thing. Is this, uh, I just had a me and Harry were having this discussion, and I was talking about how um, there's these nuanced situations, and sometimes Harry will go, "Well, if you're saying this situation, then this contradicts what you said in the in in when you said this or said that." And what I'm thinking about is, you know that it has to be clear that those, the rules are the guidelines, but there's always a nuance to the rules. So it's, it's great that you put the time and the energy and the focus, but to be one dimensional ultimately makes you one dimensional. So when you get back out there and you start, you, you start, you know, socializing and laying mm -hmm. the five bricks, you all, you, you've spent so much time not experiencing life because you've limited your life, which is, you got to work on that too. The, you know, yeah. exposing it, yourself to things that make you more interesting as a, as a human being, even though being a professional fighter and stuff is actually something. But there's, you know, I, I, I find you, you know, you go to you do things that you wouldn't normally do and expose yourself to different things. And it enhances you ultimately. And, and I mean, this is me talking about this hindsight and hindsight at 50 years old is things that I would have normally turned down that I don't turn down and things that I don't, that I will expose myself to because I don't know how this enhances me where I, I when I was younger, I was very, very focused. Like I always say, mm. you know, me running around the streets, the analogy I use is that my, my weapon of choice was always an ice pick. And the reason why an ice pick is such a dangerous weapon is because it's so focused. Mm. It takes whatever pounds of pressure that you, extend that ice pick and it puts it on a 
pinpoint. So, I mean, and you know, you're a martial artist. If you somebody is punching you with the with an ice pick in their hand, it literally you can push an ice pick through a cinder block. Yeah, right? it, yeah, because it's so focused and it's so precise. Um, so it that's something I always say, you know, in business and life and stuff. You have to ice pick your thinking, but I, I'm also um, yes, if you want to demolish what's in front of you. But you still have to take into consideration that ultimately you are losing an opportunity to expose yourself to a myriad of different experiences that ultimately enhances you, that makes you more attractive, that makes you. And then when you start to look at these these experiences, these different experiences that you might have deprived yourself or just maybe never explored them, um, you realize that the point of the, the, the point of the, the statement I say about true wisdom, you start to see these connections from these things that seem so like, how is comedy like MMA? But it is there. There are relative lessons from both of those things that you can learn, that you get to apply, that you don't get to see unless you warden, you widen your scope of or, or your, your, your controlled base or your, 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 you know, your controlled um, group in, in terms of where you, exp oh, wow, I see these things and this and that. I, I mean, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I think you do have to kind of go deep into something. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And Discipline. Then to, yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's interesting, though, because that was how you started out the journey. But after listening to the show, you actually kind of kind of flipped your world in a, in a, in a very different way which I yeah. do want to get into both sexually and, uh, and, and in life. So yeah. uh, explain that part of the journey a little bit, because I think you did that. You focused on the MMA career, and then you had this sort of other chapter of your life that the show kind of inspired. Yeah. Well, um, again, you know, the things that actually led, to, led me into that was actually putting in the work and, again, RFF and ACE, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, so... You know, applying that over and over, um, you know, I just became like a, a better individual and learned to associate with better people because I realized who's worth my time and who's not. And just in the, in the course of um, opening my, myself up to dating, I actually ran across into a couple of individuals uh, involved with the uh, with the Melbourne, um, not the swinging scene, but they, they grew sex parties. Mm. Like that's, <laughs> that's, that's what they organize. And um, right. Um, they started doing it because uh, they weren't impressed with what was happening out there on the scene. Like mm -hmm. just, um, you know, you. Uh, I was I was listening to some stories and they were saying like you you you, you try and find like a, a square, um, uh, you know, like a little space that you can go and, mm -hmm. go and have your little fun in. Um, you know, you don't know if people are getting checkups, you know, condoms aren't or aren't being, are or aren't being used, they're kind of like sedaisy and whatever. So they just wanted to make something uh, high standard. So um, yeah. shout out to, to Kaz and everyone at the Elite Insatiables, yeah. uh, creating something that's uh, safe uh, and uh, yeah, just a safe place to have fun and for you to kind of let your guard down essentially and spoil yourself. But let's let's also, my, my, you know, my experience with those, with the sex parties, very rarely are they clean. Is it? Mm. I mean, one of the reasons why you want to yeah. kick the lights down is because it's the, the the venues are filthy, you know. Yeah. And 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 even I mean, if you could speak to that a little bit. Yeah. Well. Um, so they, it, it's such a uh, good event that they organize. Um, it, it's basically like a house party that you go in. You go in. There's there's drinks and food set up every day. You interact. You mingle a bit. There's you know some some games happening um and everyone's just friendly you, you go, it's like a house party you go there you know you you interact and you're like hey i want to have sex with you and just go off and you just do your thing sort of thing um mm. all sorts of stuff happen <laughs> um right. like yeah like uh, over the course of a night there'll be like you know there'll be like several group things that happen or you know maybe there's a a, a bit of um a bondage or something it just depends on the people there mm -hmm. and the people that come through um right. clean so what like they, they do it clean they, as opposed to they do it very is, clean which is what the benefit of starting that group was what was your first type of how did you feel going into that the first time that you experienced that 
uh, it's a process to go through. <laughs> uh, it's so different. Like it's the whole, um, you know, because usually uh, I'm, I guess I'm used to that kind of interaction with women where you're, you know, you, you're building up, you, you uh, building up the, uh, um the intimacy for both of you and then you know you finally do it so there's a massive build up and then it, you, you both have sex but with this it's just very different it is that interaction is like you've, you've almost got the consent the consent is like it's very minute um you pretty much got it straight away you just got to be able to like pick up on it um right. and, and go for it so you know you'll be there chatting or whatever and then if you know if you if the timing's right, you could literally just grab them and then walk off, or you could just stop playing with them right there. Very different. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, something a, it's almost a strange thing because I experienced that when I was uh, using like BDSM apps and all that. Uh, yeah. it, it's the, the interaction is different because you go in there and there's no pretense about it. Like the idea is you can discuss sex, you know, like you can talk about it and the intent is for sex. And it's weird because it changes the dynamic of the conversation, even though you're still having like passive conversations with people mm -hmm. or, or normal conversations. But there is it, it there's a switch that goes off where you kind of go, oh, OK, if we're going in this direction, you can do that very quickly as opposed mm -hmm. to other dating apps or something. So that's a different type of environment. Well, that but, is that that's basically the pretense of that. This is this is the kink. This is what we're into. I mean, not to say that this is a the consent is. The consent is not made, but the consent is not that far from, yeah, like I'm here to do this. Uh, I'm, re I'm here to kind of hook up and say, but I just want to, I want to do it with the right person that I feel comfortable with. True, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that it, it, it did give me, um, well, first of all, these things are vetted. So um, if someone's in the, you know, the, the, they're good you know it's not like they're a creep or whatever or yeah yeah you know, they're gonna turn psycho um after going to a couple of those uh I've, i now walk around and and um it just it's given me so much confidence because i just look at people and like people i was like previously sexually attracted to on the street and then like i watch their demeanor a little bit i'm like or i, I see someone who's who thinks that they're that they're all that and that they have yeah. everything to offer and i'm just thinking you've probably really haven't experienced stuff <laughs> yeah yeah you know? right right, um, right and that's allowed me to actually focus a little bit more yeah um yeah but i guess that really comes to you know my intention of, of you know of, of what i'm trying to achieve and and the reason why i go into this sort of stuff it is to have fun but at the same time like life is limited and there's only so much fun i can have um without it taken away from other aspects um i am right. kind of coming into my my peak of existence um yeah. i'm 33 so like um my peak energy is going to be coming up uh in the next basically seven years and you know i'm looking you mean, at me I'm, in, I'm terms, a of, in terms of martial arts and sense you're saying in terms of your everything, fighting but everything man like um yeah the the, the fact that i can and put my body through quite a bit and it can able able to bounce back quite fast right right um you know the things i've learned uh, is really tying together you know my, my skin still looks good at this point um as, <laughs> that's yeah, an interesting uh, <laughs> that's an interesting one to pick because my skin still looks good you mean you're still youthful you're you're, you're saying still, that still, still, youthful. what do you want to what do you want to do with that time frame what's the plan to do with that time frame like mm. what, are, what are your goals now because yeah. are you still out out and about doing the sex parties are you encountering women for relationships so, what's the goal so, so at the moment i have been a, building a relationship up with an individual um uh, and you know at, at this stage it is open um and uh it's it's kind of interesting because i'm going through that transition now of to you know how much the battery do i want <laughs> um uh, at the same time I'm, I'm i think the fact that i have a choice is the thing that's kind of like giving me a power to it it's like the fact that yeah. I, I am actually have it's the fact i can i can, I can do it, what i want to do I saying no yeah. yeah that is like giving me a lot of a lot of power um, yeah. in, in and a I, lot of it's interesting well. how I, I say this to guys, you know, guys that I've counseled and consulted with uh, the 
the the ability to say i am not i i'm not going to let you treat me this way or you you instead of working to become good enough so that somebody accepts you when you can when you've worked on yourself that you can say wait a minute you're not good enough the way that you're treating me what it is is i don't i reject you not because i have no options but because I, I don't think that you're you're up to par and not to say that you won't be up to par for somebody else, but to ride this ride, you got to be this yeah. tall, you know? Yeah. And then to add another layer of complexity onto that um, was a little I was following exactly what you said. And um, I added a little thing as well um, that I learned from martial arts where you, you compare the opposites. So it's not only the fact that I'm rejecting you but I'm rejecting that part of myself that you're reflecting to me. Right. And that's, that's like, that creates a lot of growth. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a, it's a mind fuck in there in terms of it, you're looking in the mirror, you know, yeah. you start to look in the mirror and the, the real growth is when you're honest about what your shortcomings are, who you are and what you are and the prop. But, but I, it's, it's interesting though, to watch people, yeah. Who and then lie you make about a, that. Then you huh? make a choice of where you, where you, where you, where you want to go. But you also you put, you yeah, put I've, in the I've watched so many people lie about what the, at the yeah. base of that they they are lying with that. And what happens is their defensiveness about you calling it out, right? Calling out mm. what is obvious to you is they're usually defensive. They want to scratch your eyes out. But it's not because of what you say. It's because you are holding up a mirror reflecting to them who they are. And 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 they're mad at you because you're doing that. You're, who you're would they be that. in that scenario, Dante? What do you mean by they? Sorry, maybe I lost the – like I'm doing a couple so things here, so apologies. When you when – when, like I, I would do a consultation with a guy and he would say, you know, I don't – um uh like uh, they'll break up with a girl and oh, I don't I don't even care. I mean, I'm over it. I'm like, no, you're not over it. Like this you're hurt. You literally spent money to talk to me about this thing that you're saying you're over it, you know? Um it's funny, I was I was just counseling a, a woman which which is, you know, as much as this is relationship based, but it's 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 so connected in that um she was dating a guy who was super, super abusive, right? But in retrospect, when when asked questions and, and the variables, you find that her mother was also abusive and her father was abusive and her mm. sisters are abusive, right? So um, it's like she had a... Uh, so I was, I was saying to her that, she, you know, she had a sister that's just very jealous of her. She's the pretty one. The sister's the kind of the fat, ugly one, right? And... She, the sister is always nasty to her. I mean, I could, I could actually, you know, it's interesting because I could, you know, I could talk about this in terms of myself and my sister just always being negative and mean and, 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 you know, like I, I know of a guy, I remember there was a guy, a good friend, and one of my best friends is a guy who danced with me and she had a crush on this dude. And soon as the guy met me and became my friend, she instantly, didn't find this guy attractive anymore simply because she had so little respect for me that it was like his affiliation with me brought his his love but when you realize that that that's not my problem that's that's her that's what she's yes. dealing with in terms of in her own head you know um because whether or not i'm better or not as good or what you know whatever it is there's a level of civility that you put out simply because you're a civil, kind, and respectful person. So a lot. So I was saying, I was saying to the girl, she had a birthday party, and the sisters who she was so mean to her, she basically blocked them and she didn't invite them. So I asked her, "Did you?" And this is what you're talking referring to, Harry. It's like I said, "Were you upset that they didn't come?" I mean, they knew about it. You didn't invite them. And so you didn't expect them to come. I said, but the question was, did you was were you offended that they didn't come like deep down? And she stopped and she thought about it and she said, yeah, I kind of was. I was disappointed in a way. I said, but 
I go, but what what we what we do a lot of times is we fantasize about mm. what it is we want, even when what we what it is we want we can't have it with the person that we want it with. Sometimes they're incapable of giving us what we want, and upon that situation, we have to be honest with ourselves to say this person is not. They're just not what I want. And and what happens is when you don't have options, you make that decision to kind of put it on a pedestal that it 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 can't even really live up to. So it's like she was upset because her sisters didn't show up, but she wasn't upset because her sisters didn't show up, because if her sisters had shown up, she would have there would have been fights and arguments and stuff like that. But in her mind, it was a perception of not who her sister was but who she wanted her sister to be. She wished that her sister had come, but she wished that her sisters weren't her sister. It was a different sister. person. A they different were person different showed people. up. Yeah. And it's not something that you can, you, you can't make that decision. People are who they are. Mm -hmm. You have to accept them for what they are. And, and accept, you to accept how you want to deal with them, whether or but not you want to deal with them and how yeah. you want to deal with them. But the only way you can yeah. do that is that you have to accept yourself yeah. in a real way. You have to accept who you are so it's like it's reflective you know yeah and you also have to face the consequences of what you previously uh did <laughs> right yes yeah, yeah. so yeah. she she would have had to reach out and actually invite them at that point um, yeah yeah and that's the hard thing she would have had to face herself yeah and and when you know that somebody's abusive and then you reach out to invite them and bring them in the, into your inner circle then when they disappoint you, you also don't get to bitch about how you got taken advantage of. Yeah. This is what you asked for. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, uh, Dante, we talk about the level of balance and stuff. So I'm going through a thing with my mom, which is uh, I'm I still have a relationship with my mom. It's a very loose relationship. Yeah. But I'm fine with it. And I know what it's going to be. And I do it because for me, I feel like if she doesn't do enough damage to me personally that mm -hmm. I want to end it. Uh, and so I go, it's better to have her in my life for a little bit just because I feel better about it and I don't feel that void. Mm. So I've assessed the value of what it is. I know what the consequences right. are and I go, I can handle that and I can deal with that. And if it Let gets me ask beyond you this, that, what is, I'll be What is the it. void? When you when you talk about what, well, do you, what so how the would com you define that void? The, com the complexity of it is that she's very good to me, but she's not good to my dad, right? She right. creates a little bit of chaos there, right? So... Uh, the relationship I have with her is she's very sweet to me. And I guess, I don't know, I would I would miss her to a degree because she's my mom. It's kind of like an instinct. I'm still trying to fathom like the the palpability of, of what it is. It's mm -hmm. just an instinctual love that I have for her to a degree because she was very it's loving. Mom. It's my it's mom. A and she was a very loving mother, too. Okay. She was a pain in the ass. Right. So it wasn't. But it wasn't as if. There was she was a cold, psychotic, you know, unloving mother. She was a very loving mother, but she was also a little nuts and did a lot of crazy stuff here and there uh, a right, lot right. of the time. So it's very complex because I still have these feelings of love and uh, caring for her. At the same time, she's a crazy pain in the ass when it comes to my dad. So I assess all that and I go, she's a pain in the ass. It's going to be like that, but it's not it doesn't it's not detrimental to my life that I have mm -hmm. to cut her out. But I know right. that dealing with her, there's going to be things I have to deal with. She's going to shit on my dad. That's going to be a problem. And then when that happens, I have to walk away from her and, you know, step away and, and set boundaries. It's going to be a pain in the ass. It's never going to be smooth as as smooth as I would like it to be. And I can handle that, you know, but it's you have to make those decisions as opposed to um, other times with other relatives where you go with my brother. I go, I don't want to deal with that guy. He is unstable. It's nothing but a problem. And I'm right, cutting him right. out of my life because there is no benefit for me. Whatever it is, there is right. no benefit. You assess that. Are they making my life better? Are they providing any aspect to my life? In my mom's case, there's some love there that and um, a warmth and an energy that I like, you know. Right. right. So, yeah, that's how I what I say when I say I, but I, I think the other thing, too, is you know, I think as you have to take into consideration, what are you asking? Like, what are you asking of her? You're basically saying that this is my father and, and sure. whatever you have with him is fine that you have that with him. I, I just don't want to be privy to that. And what you find over and over again, from what you were explaining to me is she won't allow that, that boundary that you're setting 
she will always cross that boundary because, oh, your father this, your father that. But what's interesting about that is you start to you you disappear like oh i live you're like oh it's time to go and i'll tell you why it's time to go because i asked you not to do that and this is what you're doing so now we have to leave early and 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 i would say this you know just from a dude who's a little older than you Mm. you you have time to waste at least we think we have time to waste with people who don't enhance our lives yeah, because correct. we're we younger. Don't have time. I mean, we when I look time. at Anthony, yeah. I go, he's a he's younger skin. dude. He's got nice skin. He's got nice he's soft got skin. Great skin. It's still got <laughs> that, that collagen nice in it. Nice thirty-three-year-old skin. But when you start looking like a paper bag, like me, you go, <laughs> that you 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 understand that your mortality is inevitable, right? And so, it, it, it's the I guess the best way I can explain it is is. When I got when I was and you you're like when I was like your age I was like I'm no longer gonna allow people who are not who 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 their presence in my life takes away from my vitality or my money or my patience or my happiness right but I would still leave people in my life who were neutral like people that didn't necessarily enhance my life but they were part of my life and it just was kind of kind of neutral it didn't make no difference but then as i start to understand my mortality right and i start my skin goes shit right (laughs) then i um then i start saying that not not causing me problems is not enough to keep you in my life Mm -hmm. so if you're not if you're not directly making my life better because I have limited time, I, I they don't have to do anything wrong. I just yeah. get rid of them. Go ahead. You were going to say something, Anthony. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, just something I'm just, just happened to me recently. I've, I found out an associate of mine um, has, uh, is terminal, stage mm-hmm. four cancer. Right. The, um, yeah. Uh, not fun. Um, no. She's being the best that she can. She's young as well, you know. She's uh, in her 40s kid um mm. the father two years ago went through a major uh accident he was on a rollback and uh, got hit by a car wow um so if you want to really learn about the limits of time like right. you can if you just yeah spend some time with some people who are really going through something um i don't know whether it's if if, if that's it like going to a nursing home or something like that or even like talking to uh the elderly or something just yeah. like really try and experience something because you you realize it really throws things in perspective like i hung out with her so when i learned that she had the cancer uh so, all right so um my main thing now is like i'm a massage therapist and a coach so when i learned that she had cancer i was just setting up a new room and i was like hey when i set up my new room i'm gonna go and um give you a massage you know she's a yeah she i know she deserves it so i set up right. the room and then yeah, I gave her um, uh, an hour and a half massage, you know, picked her up, gave her a massage, dropped her back, and that, like, flipped my world, turned it inside out. Yeah. Yeah, and um, it really just lined up things with me. And um, yeah, since that day, I've just been able to basically communicate what I want so clearly and um, kind of like what what you know, yourself there, Harry, when you, when you were speaking about your mother and just saying, hey, I can't associate with you for now because of this reason. Cause you're going like that. Um, it, it, that when I was listening to you say that, I was thinking like, I don't even know if I'm to that point yet. <laughs> you know, just to basically be, be so blunt with someone. Um, as and, it's and, happening. And, and referring in reference to who? And what do you mean? Oh, uh, like, when when Harry was saying when the mother um yeah. s- starts going off about the father, just yeah, yeah, uh, just to say, hey, you know, I'm I'm not here for that. Um, you yeah, know, I, I still love you, but we'll uh, we'll catch up another time, sort of thing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, just just to be able to be clear, so clear with your intentions that it it just like it it just shoots from you, whatever that is, you know, your actions yeah. or your words. Yeah, I, I think you also that the those intentions are it's okay. I think you have to forgive yourself for those intentions changing as well. Yeah. Like just, I mean, so Harry's in a place where I, this is good for me. I know what it is. I'm dealing with it. Where, but there's no way. 
and and this is just there, there's no way um that Harry doesn't eventually remove her from his life and I, and I'll tell you why because mm-hmm. it, it it as time becomes more important your patience about people who are not willing to change also becomes less important like become becomes more important mm. because you're wasting on time you're wasting time on people that like so for instance you talk about you know what what I just thought about when you were talking about this friend of yours who's terminal right mm. and you you turned her inside out and gave her a massage and an hour and a half and picked her up and stuff what we don't understand is that the things like that enhance us as mm. in terms of our character as much as that is a gift for somebody who is terminal right there's an exchange of energy there's an exchange of love and intimacy in that because man i i i feel bad about what your situation and i want you to feel better which which evolves you as a human being you yeah. become so much more more evolved and then when you start talking to some you're talking to some chick who doesn't even understand who's so selfish that they don't even understand that you go oh i can't I can't even fuck with you. Yeah. Like I don't even want to yeah. fuck you, you know? Yeah. It's it, yeah, the you, evolutionary you, thing of that gift, which is just a dope thing to do, but it's also work. It's it's a, you make a sacrifice, you give that, which is the thing that makes you you grow. I mean, one of the things about having my son is the sacrifice that I make for him in a way where I would be very frivolous with my money and stuff. And I'm still frivolous with my money, but I'm frivolous with my money about him. It's a, it's about, and that giving enhances me as a human being. It makes me a better, mm. makes me more comfortable with the intimacy. And I think what happens is kind of in this uh, square block in a, in a round peg, as you get older, you just, yeah, I'm not doing this. Mm. You know, you, you you just become less patient, mm. you know, because really, and I would say this to Harry, what are you asking? What are you yeah. asking? You get the man that the, the respect that I give you as a, as my mother and love you as a mother. I'm ask, I respect and, and appreciate my father as well. And all I'm asking you is not for a public display of you being a mm. cunt like and you can't even bring yourself to just go, this is my father. You don't even have the empathy to go, this is my father. Stop treating my father in this way. This, you, you're not a good person to do that. And there will come a time where you go, enough is enough. I mean, to be honest, even when you talk about it, now, and, I've, and I've watched you transition to where you used to put up with her shit, to where you don't put up with much of her shit, to mm-hmm. where you hang out with her the minute it's something, the shortest visit has been thirty seconds. That 30 was the record. Seconds. That was the record. Yeah. I didn't even. Uh, I didn't even put anything down. I was like, "All right, I'm out." You know, and and it's a balance of. I mean, listen, I've gone years without talking to her at one point. Yeah. To set it straight, so it's somewhat better now. But at the same time, you go, "Well, this is what it is," and I will tolerate it when and when I don't need. To, you know, the relationship is minimal now, but it's a. She's not going to get. I see my dad once a week, right? Mm-hmm. She doesn't get that. She doesn't get the same thing. She gets the, right. you know, the part-time rate or whatever. Okay. I'll give you the yeah. once every two months, you know, yeah. hello on Mother's Day, hello on your birthday type of And it deal. becomes less and less because sure. you you as you evolve as a person, your the evolu- your own personal elu- elu- evolution makes you intolerable of people that are not going to progress your life or move your life forward. And and what's interesting about that is even somebody who is terminally ill, right? That the dynamic of what 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 that exchange was, you know, her being terminal and you helping her is monumental in terms of your personal growth. Taking care of somebody makes you grow as a human being and that changes you. As a person, it helps your empathy. It makes you it makes you more attractive. It makes you more confident about it because you're a good dude. You know, mm. Let, I mean, let's get deep into this on the Patreon. Um, yeah. What? Anything you want to plug? Um. Uh, yeah. Look me up on my social media. Um. Uh, I look at health. I got a website as well. 
uh, www.ilookathealth.com. I look um, at health. Is that the same? I, I look at health. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. I do um, online. Uh, so, so when I first started with the massage, uh, basically I was housebound for two months. So I had to learn how to treat myself um, through injuries and things like that. I learned through uh, professionals doing that. Um, I'm able to give that to people as well. So if you're experiencing pain or um, you have a sport and you've got an injury or something that you need help getting over, um, yeah, just reach out to me and then uh, we'll be able to, I'll be able to help you out, speed along the process. Um, yeah. And if you're not doing, if you're not on the Patreon with, with you guys, um, with uh, Man School, go on it. It's, look, um, sometimes I'm really short on time. So I'll just like flip through the Patreon and like yeah. I know the nuggets are going to be there. So I, I listen to that one and like the fastest way to get from A to B is to get a good coach. So if you're not yeah. doing the consultations, grab that for sure. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to compress time for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, apart from that, uh, um, let's uh, chat about a few things on three channel. It. That's Patreon, patreon.com slash manschool202 is what Anthony was referring to. You can join us over there and support us. Uh, and uh, we do bonus content. And, uh, you know, Anthony's a guy who says it's helped him out a lot. We do a lot of the technical stuff over there. We give out a lot of advice, answer listener mail. So patreon.com slash manschool202. And also, uh, he was also talking about the consultations. You could reach me via email, advicefromharry at gmail.com. And uh, I can help you out with uh, relationship consultations. For Dante, go to dantenero.com slash consult. Um, yo, uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I'll see you on the Patreon side, please.